Hello to all the power users out there. My name is Mahan, and this episode, we're going deep in the Keyboard Maestro. If you look over here, you'll see the learning objectives for this video. We'll be learning about the action prompt for user input. Along the way, we'll be learning about the, some variables and text tokens, menu, checkbox, give you a few examples, and at the end, I'll give you some essential actions that you might need when you're working with the action prompt for user input. All right, let's get started. Go ahead and open up your action list and drag and drop the action in. And you can see here the first text field is our title, so you can update that appropriately. And our next text field is our prompt, and you can think of that as your description. So I can give it a try now. You can see that the first line here is our title, and our second line here is our prompt. All right, hit OK for now. Next, we have our variables and default values. This is where we want to hit this little green button here. It will give us these two text fields. First is our variable and our default value. So what is a variable? Well, you can think of a variable simply as a box like this. And before you can use this box, you got to label it. you got to call it something. Well, for our situations, for our demonstration, we'll be calling it temp for our temporary box. And inside this box, you can keep your numbers or you know, keep your values or letters, or whatever you want. But why do you want to use variables in the first place? Well, think of your workflow as this line here. And it's a pretty simple workflow, but like right here, there are some situations where you push the number one, and there are other situations where you push the number two, you see? And so you have the option of one making two macros for one workflow, one with your one keystroke and the other with your two keystroke, or you can have a, a prompt update this keystroke for you. So you can just have one macro. All right, so let's go ahead and update this with temp for our temporary box. And we're just gonna call it Bumo. Let's give it a try here. You see that Bumo is it's populates in this little text field here. Now, it doesn't really make sense to have a variable that doesn't vary, so let's go ahead and add our second option. It's gonna be Kabumo. All right. Oh, so you wanna insert the, the vertical bar between your options, and that is Shift Backspace. There we go, Shift Backspace. So give it a little try right there. So now you can see that you have your two options here. So, yeah. Now, when you're working with variables, it is a good idea to have the default value be whatever is currently in your box, okay? So you do that by inserting the text token of itself. So insert variable temp and another vertical bar, shift backspace, there we go. So you can give it a try. You can see that the default right now is Bumo. But if I change it to Kabumo, I say, okay, try it again. You see that default value has now been updated to Kabumo because that's what was in the variable. All right. Now, let's say that our variable only has two values. So you go temp one here, and it's, you want to make it a check a checkbox. You can go zero, vertical bar, one. Give it a try. You can see that now we have a checkbox. And same idea as before. You want to have the temp one with another variable so you can have the default variable be what's currently in it so currently now it is on so i disable it and say okay try it again you can see now it's unchecked yay now last is our buttons down here and you can add another button here whatever you like basically you can think of it as another variable so whatever whatever you hit oh, whatever you hit shall be stored in a variable. And that variable is, we're gonna use a quick little variable can then condition here. So the variable is our result variable. So you go down to, there you go, the result button. So whatever you hit shall be stored in the result button variable here. And so if I hit okay here, if I try to, if I select, or oh, let me have a little notification for it to show something. So everything is okay. 
So if I select all and give it a try, and I hit OK, and then it will show everything it is OK. Everything is OK. And basically, it's the same idea for these, these, variable, these variables as well. So you can think of this button as one variable, one big variable that you can have options to click on. And you can think of this as a like one variable. You can have the option of changing or setting up a pop-up menu or check checkbox for. So if we want temp, we want to use the temp variable. So if our temp variable contains um, Lumo, then you can say everything is Lumo. And you want to say instead of contains, switch to is since both of these options have contain Lumo in it. And then select all, try it again, and say Lumo. Hit OK. Say everything is Lumo. All right, so now let's give you, now I'm gonna give you a few essential actions that you might need when working with the prompt for user input. First is our insert text. Um, I, you see how I have the text token here, and you can insert that here with the insert token again. And you can either insert it by pasting or by typing. Next is our move or rename file. And you can have, you know, your hello folder or whatever folder you're using, and then you can change it to your variable, your your um, text token, variable temp. And next is our if then action. And pretty much like we said what I said before, you have your your action, your, your condition, your variable condition, temp. And if it is, if it, whatever you want it to be, then if it matches that, if it's true, then it will do this. If it's false, it will do this. Next is our repeat action. This is really nice because you can have a, a prompt repeat a workflow a certain number of times. So instead of going back in Keyboard Maestro and updating this one value or changing the three, every time you want to use it, you can have a quick prompt that you know pops up and you can change this value. So instead of one, we want to insert our variable. And instead of a text token this time, you want to just go ahead and type in the number. But now number, you can see here it's invalid because currently the temp variable is text. So you can, we can go back in here and change it to, but you can't since it's a button. So instead, let me actually just go use my loop. Let's use my loop because I know that loop this is the variable I use to do repeats. All right. So lastly, a good action to have is the cancel all macros action, because when you're working with loops and you find you're watching it and it's doing things and you, oh, and it, no, it skips a step or something goes wrong. It's a good idea to have a cancel all and I'll make one real quick. Command N, make a new macro, call it stop all actions or I'll stop all macros and then go ahead and search for macro and then cancel all macros. And I have set mine to hot key trigger, shift escape. All right, so there you have it. A deep dive into prompts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.